Good evening and welcome to another edition or rather good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. This is SLT with NAV, or better known as something like that. And uh, well, every week we feature somebody extra special on the show from the Malaysian music scene. And this week, well, I wouldn't want to call him a guest because he's been coming on the show a couple of times. So he's practically family. And the good news is this particular time has brought in his siblings, man. The entire family is in the house. We are talking about an honest mistake. We got Daryl, we got Sonny, we got Thomas, and we got Ian. Am I right? I got everybody in, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's right. Yeah. Everybody's in the frame, right? Yeah. Excellent. Ah. Finally, man. Finally, I yeah. get to see the whole, whole team. I usually is this Darren? And uh, yeah. Darren and Darren, but this time, <laughs> hey, you brought in the brothers, the siblings into the picture, man. Yeah, you know, I I decided, you know, it's it's too much of me, lah. You know, I need to have the guys on the show too, you know, because I don't want to, I don't want to be the only one talking, uh, So yeah, no. let, is, let is, it, is that the case the or the band? Oh, is that is that the case or is the band members always going like, no, 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 Darren, you talk, you talk, you talk, you talk. You do the dirty work and we'll just sit down and watch the whole show. <laughs> yeah, most of the time is that, like, you know, but then yeah. I'm like, no, 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 this time we're going to all talk together. <laughs> ah, okay, okay, good, good, good. That's the whole idea. That's the best part because uh, you guys have been rocking it big time and uh, you, be, I mean, you're one of the guys that pretty much almost, almost every month there's a new track coming out or something that's been going on with uh, HM, man. Is that true? Am I right? Yeah, I, I think earlier this year, you know, I mean, when we put out like our track last year, that was when we, we came onto the show, um, you know, that was last June. And then this year, we were supposed to put out like the new track, like in April, but because of the lockdowns and all these things, um, I decided, okay, you know, just to buy time, I'll just do some covers, you know. Um, and, and, I, and it was cool because, you know, I managed to do a track with Yasmin Aziz, you know, with Irina and with Amanda. So, like, new artists, um, you know, having the opportunity to feature them, you know, I think that's that's kind of, like, one of the things that I've always championed and wanted to do. So, yeah, you know, put out some covers. Plus, my friend gave me a free, like, account to, do, to upload the tracks online. Because with covers, you know, you have to pay all these, like... Um, you know, royalty, like yeah. the royalty and stuff for that. So he gave me a free account. So that's like sorted out, you know what I mean? Nice. So that's... I'm like, okay, la, you know, we'll just do some covers, buy some time, you know. And then finally, now we just drop the brand new track. La. Nice. Because like every month, like whenever I see the notification from, see, I follow you guys. So that's like, okay, there's one something out, something out. So I assume that it was something from the previous track or whatever. And then I realized, hey, shit, this is the new shit. And then, hey, this is another new one. It's like, shit, this guy, don't stop, man. It's like, which is a good thing, which is a great thing. Uh, something that I look forward in the bands. Because uh, if you notice, uh, I've been following a lot of the guys. And uh, it's it's very rare you find artists coming out with frequent music track. One, you guys are doing it. Roshan is doing it. And maybe another two, three. Uh, Karazi is another guy who's been churning out music like nobody's business. And which is good. I, I should say thank you on behalf of Music Lover. Uh, music Lover. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming it out. Uh, with those yeah, tracks, man. man. But uh, first, let's get to know the band a little bit down here for the benefit of our listeners who uh, who's just got in gotten introduced to uh, an honest mistake. Let's find out who's who. Darren, you're the lead vocalist and guitar, right? Uh, yep. I know, I know, like, just for the listeners. Like, just <laughs> pretend, like I don't know, like, just like, like I'm a stranger kind of name. <laughs> and of course, yep. Sunny, who has the best visual, he made me look bad. He made my whole podcast look bad. <laughs> so I, look like a school, I look like a school kid beside him, man. No, no, this is the, um, uh, it's just the, 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 the potential of what yours can be in very, very soon. Sort ah, of thing. nice. Yeah. I'm, 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 guessing I'm guessing you're a gamer. I'm guessing you're a gamer also. I am. I'm also, I also stream on Twitch as well on Mondays and Wednesdays. Nice. Wow, what a plug. <laughs> nice go ahead plug it in man and in the band you play the i play bass uh in an honest mistake nice man he has he has one yeah. of those voice that uh, makes me sound like mickey mouse also it's like, you know, the deep one so right now <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <And then> he, <laughs> it's like a good 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 tone man a good good sounding tone and ian hey ian hey hi so i'm ian and i play the drums and i keep time and i make sure everyone follows me <laughs> oh. he's the time master no wonder yeah. you guys were on on the on the podcast way before i showed up it must be ian's work yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and of course we and of course we have thomas yo yo yeah i'm i, I played the lead guitar in the band 
That's I, all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah, because I got a lot to ask you in a bit from now. It's a bit regards with your brand new track all over again. And uh, well, Darren sent me the press release a couple of days back. And I've noticed also the line, uh, my loneliness is killing me was actually here. Uh, was it an abstract from Britney Spears' track, right? <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. One more time. Huh? Yeah, it's for uh, Hit Me Baby yeah. one more time. And, you know, and the storyline behind this was actually funny, man. I mean, I mean, sad, sad, depressing, but at the same time, I find it to be funny coming from a musician who's going through this phase in life. I thought that never happens, man. Musicians were never single. But he's talking <laughs> about me, right? <laughs> yeah. <you are>. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, my heart. Uh, uh, no, I'm surprised that actually happens. I mean, it's almost close to impossible. Why, Thomas? Okay, but let's, before we get into that, let's, Darren or any one of you guys, please let us know a little bit about the track. What is it all about, man? Just, just before we get into the details of it. Well, the track, um, yeah, I mean, like how this track came about, you know, like I started producing stuff at home uh, last year, you know, because of the lockdown, you know, obviously we couldn't do much. And I'm like, okay, you know, I bought a plugin. I paid 800 bucks for it. And I told myself, I need to use it, you know. So that was like at the end of 2019, that was November 2019. It was a Black Friday sale and I bought it and I'm like, okay, I really need to know how to, I, I need to know and learn how to use this, right? So when March came around, you know, that was when, things just kicked into high gear. I'm like, okay, now I need to learn how to do all these things. And one after the other, I just started writing, you know, I started listening to a lot of tracks, started, um, you know, picking out bits and pieces of, of stuff that we like, you know, and then put them all together, form them. And um, then I didn't have the lyrics until like March or April this year, you know, okay. and I was kind of like sitting down and just just trying to crack my head, you know, on what I should write about. And then, um, you know, I guess, I think the guys came to the studio one time. Oh, no, 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 this was not. So this was just Thomas telling me a, a story about himself, you know, and and uh, how he's kind of like, you know, shit, man, I'm, I'm alone at home. All of y'all got partners, you know. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, oh you poor <laughs> things. <laughs> oh. You know. <laughs> and, and it sucks, you know, that, that I'm, I'm home alone. Like, I have my dogs and, you know, yeah, sure, you can do like virtual calls and all that, but there's nobody physical to be with, you know. And then he said that, you know, if I could, if I could go, if I could turn back time, I'd do it all over again. So it was one of those things that he said that I concluded, you know, okay, because that line he said was, I do it all over again. And that was the thing that really sparked the whole process. I'm like, wow, that's a really good line. And then I said, tell me more so that I can write more. And then he just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, sorry to say this, Thomas, it's never going to end right now. <laughs> Everybody's going to be asking you this. Yeah. Seriously, you're talking about, when you say loneliness, you're talking about no girlfriend loneliness or no friends around loneliness. Which one is it, Thomas? Uh, well, basically, um, it's it's a no girlfriend situation loneliness because um, okay. why I'm a man that? of many regrets. That's the thing, Ooh. you know. Like, like Ooh. yeah, I uh, I'm a guy who still can't get past some of the things that that has passed. Yeah, you know? okay. So I'm still going through that process of like um getting over things and stuff like that. So at that time, at, it was last year, right? Was it this year or last year? I think it was earlier this year. You told me the earlier. story. Yeah, yeah. 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 Earlier then. This year. Yeah, then everyone is locked at home and stuff like that. And, you know, being at home alone, you don't get to see anyone and things like that. It, it sort of got to me, especially I have this uh, whole insomnia thing. Okay. I can't sleep early. That's that's a really big problem I have until right now, you know. In fact, yesterday I slept at 7 a.m. <laughs> so, so each time whenever that happens, right, whenever I can't sleep, I start to think about things like that, you know. And sometimes it's it can get a little bit depressing. Oh, yeah, man. Take but, it easy, dude. But, yeah, but as long as I stay positive and as long as I know that my brothers are here with me, then I'll be fine. Uh, at least, at least you got a good reason because I thought you had some weird sexual fetishes that chased women away. So that's what you're single. <laughs> uh, but, 
And we don't that know about that. <laughs> yeah, we don't know lah. You know, we he don't know lah. But anyway, we're not going to bring yeah. that up. <laughs> just kidding, man. Just kidding, Thomas. <laughs> just having fun here. Uh, but yeah, anyway, yeah. it is it is good. It's good that you experienced that because if it wasn't for that, you wouldn't have uh, come out with this particular track. Sometimes mm-hmm. experiences are the best things in a song, uh, because I always believe that songs have to have a connection with people. And uh, what you've written in this particular song, and what is it all about? It's uh, it's nice. A lot of people do face the same uh, situation as you do, and uh, of course, we all like to go back into time. But speaking, going back into time, what did you guys miss the most apart from gigs? Is there any special, memorable moment that one particular show that you wish you can do it again? Tours, man, tours. Really? Which one? Mm. There should be one at least, and at least you one that you really want to go back and do it again, all over again. I actually, yeah, I agree with Thomas. I I really yeah. did like our Thai our Thailand uh, length, but but that was also because that was the first time I went traveling with with the band because I I I probably joined like what three years maybe is it? Twenty fifteen lah was when you joined. Okay, and, yeah, end so of twenty fifteen. Yeah, I have no concept of time anymore. Ready, <laughs> being in, cooped up, <laughs> but yeah, yeah doing that. The Thai, the the Thai show that we went because that was like we went full on four days, we played six shows, and like yeah. how how is that fathomable, right? It's like how do you play six shows in four days? And so that so we had two days where we played two shows in one day, and we had Whoa. to keep the energy levels on all the damn time, and I was so happy that we managed to pull that off, and the crowd was so supportive. They were such great people. Very welcoming people, um, and yeah, I I felt like it was something that we achieved, and I really want to do that all over again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, nice. Nice. The, the thing about that tour, I mean, I I like the fact that we actually did so many shows. I mean, there were some big ones, and that there were some like smaller ones, you know. But it was really about connecting with the people there, because this was the first time we were going as a band, as an honest mistake, to Bangkok. Because, like, the previous times, like, you know, we've been to, like, Pattaya and Phuket and stuff, but um, it was mostly just either me or with, you know, like, the the old... with my Such other band before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we went we went to Phuket together, right? Um, that was 2014. 2014, we went to Phuket. And then 2015, early 2015, I went to Pattaya on my own. Yeah, but this Bangkok tour, it was quite massive. Uh, so, you know, it's really crazy. Nice. Yeah. Was, but I'm Ian, pretty sure, Bang. Ian, what, what about you? Do you have the same feeling? Or do you have another lo- location that you enjoyed most that you want to go back then and do it all over again? Uh, I think like what um, Sunny mentioned about Thailand, that was um, one of the experiences where it's like, you know, how, how, we, how we see bands from, from other countries when they announce tours. Basically, like they have back to back shows. So, like they have one show on Saturday night, then they have one Sunday, then they take Monday off, and then all the way to Friday. So, that experience was actually quite uh, exhilarating because we have to be on on the game, you know. So, and basically, they also gave a, a sort of like a gauge for us, you know, even as musicians, you know, if we were to tour, you know, uh, other countries in like two weeks, and then they are like, like about 10 shows in between. So this actually is more like for us to gain um, stamina and whatnot. So that's my point of view. <laughs> so then, other than that, I think Taiwan. There's one show that we played in Taiwan, which um, we played to. How big was the crowd, Darren? <laughs> Huge, <laughs> man. I think it was like 30, 30, yeah, yeah. 30K, 30K. 30, yeah. 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 So, so it was like a, a summer beach music festival. And then uh, one thing that I also want to point out is we were really uh, treated like as how uh, musicians should be likewise how we treat the the crew and the team and the riders and everything so so um like for example uh, on stage i require an industrial fan to keep okay. cool and they are able to deliver and then they they have everything is top notch you know the service that they, they gave was so it's memorable and even from where i was sitting on stage looking at the crowd, I was stunned for a few times. <laughs> and it, was like, oh, man. it was surreal. But it was then, a rock then, star then, experience. Yeah, I would say that. But then, yeah. then again, it also taught us to be in some ways humble and also grateful to be able to go to countries like Korea as well. When we play in Korea, it's also a bit like Thailand, back to back shows. You know? so, so that gave an experience for us to also, uh, it's more than just performing. I think for me, it's also getting to know 
the bands in that in that region as well so yeah so i can still mm. remember clearly and uh yeah so those those are my because i'm always curious when uh, when malaysian bands go to these places and uh, the, the support they get every every one of them are, that i've heard thus far everyone said it was awesome they really treated malaysian bands like a rock star you know like you're just mentioning that you wanted a fan you get a fan and all this kind of stuff over here you get a hey, sorry no budget <laughs> yeah that, and, and that's the thing you see and that's the quality of you know other countries like even like our, our closest neighbors like singapore you know singapore has always been top notch you know and when we played in singapore like you know like years ago you know every time we play in singapore we're like wow you know we get treated like royalty you know we get like proper equipment we get like one hour sound check and stuff like that but i mean we're so used to like 15 minute sound check you know and and then we're done um but yeah but we thought singapore was good right until we went to taiwan when we went to taiwan you know like everything that we wanted you know they were parked at the side and then i asked the stage guys right you know hey uh, uh, did anybody use any of this equipment they're like oh no this one is specially just for you you know Ooh. so and we're like wow you know that kind of treatment you know so i think like over here in malaysia it's it's i think it's getting there you know it's it's also i guess in the manner that you ask you know oh, okay, and okay. and how and how you word things you know and that then there comes the role of like artist manager and stuff like that where it's super important because you can't be like hey aku nak chini 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 kalau tak ada aku aku tak main you know because if you're going to go like that you know anybody's going to be pissed right you know but there's always a softer approach and you know there's that's always the brother way of doing things yeah, like, right. you know? no but actually yeah. actually they should pay more attention to the uh sound and light or other technical specs of it for a band because when you have good equipments good setup and good uh, you know all the whole works you have a good show it's not like just because you're famous you just put the person there the crowd goes hoo ha and that's about it it's like at the end of the day it's also about your reputation you work so hard to create that music but when you go on stage when you don't have the right specs for or rather the equipments to showcase it with a bad sound it affects your performance and your quality also which uh, it wouldn't make it a memorable uh, event I, because i've always paid attention to that uh, being a guy from the sound and light and event industry it's, it's always particular the band has to have the best of the best things in order for you to put up a good show you know that's how it works and i hope that's i hope true. it changes because right now is the heaven we haven't seen a show live shows but how's that coming along with you guys any any hope any light at the end of the tunnel so far <laughs> since everybody's uh, yeah. jabbed up already everybody got the doses and all so is there any any light at somewhere somehow i mean any possible ideally obviously the idea would be to that yes it's gonna happen next month don't worry it's gonna happen next month i mean that's the hope that everyone has but um we 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 are optimistic but also um rational about it as well it it, mm. it might not happen so soon until you know things start to change a little bit more around here about you know people's views on vaccinations and you know keeping the sops and stuff like that um staying safe um until that happens then you know it's going to be a bit hard to have shows i've seen like in america and in europe they've already started bands have already started touring yeah the festivals are already planned for next year in june um so they have hope even though their cases are pretty pretty messed up as well <laughs> um <laughs> that's great yeah. let's go with the flow huh no, but the yeah. thing is, this, the reason why I'm asking is because since you guys said you've been touring a lot, you have all had the experience. I think you already have a reputation of being a band that's performed on international stages. So are there chances of you going back there? Not here, not locally. Forget about local. Uh, this one, I was maybe one or two years, maybe. Uh, but uh, I mean, abroad, abroad from that. Is there any potential of that happening? At least we were you can supposed have to go to Japan last year. We were supposed to yeah. go to Japan last year, and and I'm still banking on that, Darren. <laughs> I'm still yeah. banking on that. I want to go. I want to go Japan, man. Go, yeah, man, go. <laughs> that, that's true. I actually just spoke to my that friend of mine from Okinawa. You know, because earlier in February last year, I went to Okinawa on my own for for a music conference. You know, and I met all these other people there and stuff like that, and um the the guys there actually invited us to play in may so it was supposed okay. to be like in april like immediately almost immediately after he had like tickets and everything ready to go and then the the restrictions just got tighter and tighter and tighter you know so we ended up not going 
because even after he pushed it back to May, so we couldn't do it. And um, yeah, so I'm still banking on that. I really want to go back there, mainly because, okay, I, I want to enjoy the, 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 the island, you know, because Okinawa is amazing, you know, there's, there's just so many good things about Okinawa. But it's also very, very small, right? Okay. And everything is in one place, you know, we tasted some of the best food, you know, and, and the, the only other reason why I want to go back there is because there's a giant secondhand, um, like, like arcade, you know, you've got secondhand books, clothes, you know, shoes, anything at all. And there's a giant music instrument se section. So I went, nice. so on that trip, I actually came back with a guitar and, um, I told the guys, if we were to go again, Let's go without our guitars, go to that <laughs> shop, buy the guitars, then we'll play the shows, you know? That would be an experience, man. You better pray the shop is still there, lah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a huge store. It's it's one of those, like, you know, like, uh, it's, it's a giant warehouse, you know, single floor. Everything is there, you know? And, and you know how Japanese people are. They're very organized. So everything is sectioned out nicely. The prices are clearly stated. There's a guy, you know, waiting to handle you and stuff. It's so good, right? So, yeah. Because yeah. even shows, in terms of shows, uh, some of the guys that are sessionists and musicians that I've, uh, I've chatted with, they say that even if you think that all this while that he had a good experience on technical side of it, or people giving you what you need, Japan will take it a whole new level. It's exactly. like they they actually pay de uh, very very close details to every single thing that you do or rather need, and then they'll provide it in such a way that you would feel like shit, man. I didn't even ask for this, but I'm still getting it. You know those kind of things is like they're yeah. that good. There's a lot of them. Like uh, I don't know whether you know this. Uh, oh man, I can't remember his name right now. Louis Pergasson, the drummer. Yeah. 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 He, he told me the same thing. He had from one location to another location. He was performing north and south of Japan. So first day he did, they came, they took a photograph of his chair, the drummer's chair, seating, measurements, A to Z, every single thing. And the next mm. day when he landed for the next location, way up north, everything was exactly the same as it was on the previous day. They set it mm. up so perfectly. So wow. that's one good experience you'll have over there, man. Yep. But uh, speaking of live uh, events and so on, how is it coming along with uh, virtual events with you guys? I mean, you did a couple of PTX concerts and all of that, how is that moving along? Are you enjoying it or you just, you just want to just move away from that? Because I know we have to find ways of methods of uh, coming out and performing virtually, in fact, and different different platforms are available, but are you guys enjoying it or you just find it that, no, I'm not going to do much of that anymore? Which one is it? For me, I, I feel that without yeah. act an, an actual crowd in front of you, right? It's just, mm. it's just not fun anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's being there with an actual crowd. That, that is where the connection that, that we have with the crowd, you know, the fans and stuff like that. So leaving that aside, everything is just a little bit dull. That's, that's for me. That's my own point of view. So you yeah, wouldn't I mean, want to look at... Yeah, it's, it's the same for me as well. You know, like last year, we did a Christmas thing, you know, at home. But... Um, you know, we it was a pre-recorded show, but still, the cost put into it is also very high. You know, so we we hired you know our our friend who's an engineer. You know, he got his equipment here in my room. We actually recorded in the room, and instead of using like high-end cameras, we're like, okay, let's DIY it. Let's just use phones, and then later on we'll sync everything together. And that's what we did. Um, not the greatest outcome, but it was still a good attempt. But we realized that. It's just different, you know, like for, for us performing, you know, pretending like there's an audience and for the audience watching through a computer screen, you know, it's, it's just a totally different thing. Lah. But I did see a post by Jennifer Thompson that she just posted today, you know, saying that, you know, guys, y'all need to go virtual because that's the only way forward for now, at least, you know. So when the time comes back, you know, like for us to do live shows again, then do live shows, lah. You know, but there's also a lot of other factors like the cost, you know, the time, the editing, you know, like the long process of it. So, personally, yes. for me, if could I, would I choose to do a virtual show again? Probably not. But if all the production side of things, if they were all taken care of, like the show that we did uh, on the platform, it, it, is this show called The Platform? That was amazing, you know. It was 7, 8, full-on full proper cameras, you know, great sound, great lights and everything. 
um, we did that last year. And that was actually the first live stream show that we did because we uh, we we didn't want to skim on the on the uh, quality. So we wanted okay, if we're gonna do something live like this, virtual, ha it has to be good, you know. So we waited lah until we did that show, and then end of the year, then we did our own show lah after seeing how things could be done. Nice. But the thing is, considering, uh, have you guys ever considered using different platforms other than the, the Facebook ones or PTX and all? Because another thing that I've, uh, I've heard one of the conversations on Clubhouse lately was uh, performing on Twitch. Twitch seems to be a different world altogether in terms of the people coming on board, the amount, the quantity of people, the viewers. You know, it's, it's a little different than what you watch on YouTube and uh, Facebook. Have you ever considered that? Is it a good thing for musicians? Because I know it's famous for the uh, gamers side of it, but as for performers, is it a good thing? Because I know some guys who are also doing it that. Okay, let's go, um, Sunny. <laughs> let's go. Twitch, <laughs> let's Twitch, go. Twitch streamers represent. Let's go. Yep. Yes. Um, so myself and Thomas, we do stream on Twitch, um, but we're, we're mostly streaming our gameplay. Um, we do actually. I am actually in uh, like in a group of friends. Like there are a bunch of musicians in Malaysia as well. Um, some of them are sessionists, uh, like Dean Sim, Daniel Suba, um, Kieran David Jumawan and stuff like that. Um, and one of our friends, Adam Lewis, he's a he's a he he played bass. Um, and then he's also uh, a sound engineer first and foremost. But uh, on Twitch, uh, he plays guitar and sings, and it's just that just for one hour. And then we're always there to support him. He gets new people coming in from all over the world new audience and stuff like that. So that works. What I've noticed for music, that works if, um, number one, if you are a singer-songwriter or maybe if you are a solo performer um, and or if you are like a whole band in the same place, um, okay. then that works. But yeah. because for us, it's a bit hard. We are all, you know, in separate places. Like my the only ones who are close to each other is myself and Darren. And Okay. I, yeah, everyone else is pretty far. I so see, I see. Because it's a, it could, it work. Bit, could work, but not too sure yeah, as a full band. Because yeah. everybody is talking about, uh, you know, this whole whole pandemic uh, season. It also has to do with making money. It's not just about churning out music because it's, it's expensive producing tracks. you got to make back some money and finding the right platform. Virtual tickets, uh, I don't know. I just don't find it much happening yeah. that much. There are too many of it out there. And... Uh, People started to lose interest at the start. Yes, it was a big deal because the common common users of our or users of internet are not really into that stuff yet. It was the starting stage. It was new. Yes, fine. But if it's Twitch, it's a different community altogether. They are meant to watch, sit there and watch the whole thing. So if they can make money out of that, why not, man? It'd be yeah. a good thing. I think if, is... if the if the district lines. I mean, like if if. You know, like the government says that, okay, you know, y'all can travel, you know. We would, I, I'm sure the guys would do it in a heartbeat, you know. I think the only reason why that's not happening is for the fear of being caught in an un unplanned roadblock. Or, you know, everybody's like, you know, we can see our friends traveling and going here and there and all that. And they're like, oh, bro, I just use Waze lah. You know, <laughs> yeah, sure, you know. But the thing is, like, I was just talking to our, 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 our video guy, like, earlier today. And he said that sometimes it's not 100% accurate, you know, and, and sometimes people don't report it, you know, or it could be one of those like pop-up uh, roadblocks, you know, so, and that's that's the thing that we fear, um, and, and that that is the only thing holding, uh, holding us back, because like, to do a virtual show again, I mean, we know what it takes, and if we were to do it, we, we can, but it's mainly that, that is kind of like holding us back lah, yeah, but I mean, like, Sunny, you wanted to say something else about Twitch. Oh, no, yeah, no, just Twitch, I, I guess, like, um, because we were talking about um, about how people aren't willing to pay, uh, Nev, you mentioned about um, people aren't willing to pay, like, you know, money for, like, concert tickets and stuff like that just to watch that one band for X amount of hours, which is true because now nowadays now that we're home we're always on a computer our attention span also has kind of reduced as well it's getting shorter and shorter 
So things like Twitch, even though you're there to support your favorite streamer uh, for however long it is, you still have that option to switch to someone else or, you know, and then come back later sort of thing. And at the same time, you're still able to donate. You can donate. You can subscribe to your Twitch streamer, which is as low as like five ringgit per month. And you get okay. like these special like yeah, emojis and stuff like that. So stuff like this, it's small for the user. But imagine if you have like, you know, you have 10 people who, who do that. You already have your 50 bucks. Okay. And then you just get more and more. So it's, it is actually a great platform to, to do it. But to do a full ban on it, it's a bit tough. Yeah. It oh, is a bit tough. Look into that, man. I really got to look into that. It's scary. Because a lot of people are talking about Twitch, I wasn't too sure of the mechanics, how the whole thing worked. But uh, well, hopefully it will, will, it will be good. Because, but then again, I hope it doesn't kick off too big. Because I really want to go back watching gigs in clubs. <laughs> you know, the, the energy, the feel, getting drunk and you know, head banging. Uh, that's that's something I really, really make a miss, man. This is where I yeah. want to do it all over again. Go back to gigs. And all <laughs> <that>. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and speaking of all over again, there's also uh, something different about the sound of uh, Honest Mistake here. It's like it's there's the more screams involved in this. It's like th there's a slight difference in the music sense. Could you just help me out here? Am I? Am I? Did I get it wrong, or is it that's how it is? Uh, no, I mean you, you got it right because. Like all of us actually come from heavy band, like heavy backgrounds, you know, like Sunny used to play in a death metal band, you know, like so, so did Ian Thomas and myself, you know, so all of us like came from heavy bands and then we decided, okay lah, you know, let's just do something a little bit lighter, more pop oriented, you know, and that was like the first few releases, you know, that we've put out like years ago. And then after a while, you know, it was also because Leonard was in the band then, you know, okay. and um, Le Leonard has always had this eye for, for pop in the sense that he would tell me, you know, maybe you should, you should try to steer it this way, you know, to, to, uh, to, to appeal to a larger audience, which, you know, I, I did agree at that time, you know. And no, no, the, the, the bottom line is that he just wants to impress chicks, that's all. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> he yeah. did that every time on stage as well. Uh, oh. <laughs> like, He's a so, player. Yeah. He's yeah, a player. So, <laughs> he is a player except a guitar player. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. but, but the thing is th this, right? So instead of writing like happy, poppy songs, you know, I'm like, enough with all of that. Like, I want to write songs that people can really connect with and for for it to mean something that oh you know i love you you love me no i don't want to do all of that anymore but to write real emotions you know so when i don't give a damn came out last year you know that was kind of like the beginning and that song was actually inspired by sunny as well that line came from him you know yeah when okay. we were jamming in yeah so so a lot of these new songs are inspired by the guys in the band and their experiences and then i took that and and then put it into a song right so I figured, you know, I think it's time for us just to go a little bit heavier, a little bit darker and to be more emotional, you know. I mean, not to say the pop stuff weren't emotional, you know. It's just that this one... A different level of emotion. It's right? just a different level altogether. And at the same time, you know, we wanted to cater to, to everybody else's influences as well. You know, and um, Thomas is a big, like, atmospheric, you know, shoegaze guy. So, you know, all these songs, you know, when I wrote them, I wrote it with, with him in mind. Like, okay, how, how would he play this part? You know, what kind of lines can he insert into these songs? You know, what, and that was how, like, the new sound kind of developed, you know. And then Ian and myself, we're, we're, we're also very into, like, hip-hop and trap, you know. So we're like, okay, you know, I think we can put some of that, that you know, those beats into the song too. So that's how like the new sound kind of developed. Which I yeah. like, I like it very, very much. Yeah, I mean, you know my style, right? I usually, when it's a new track, I'll only listen to it just before I get onto the uh, podcast itself. And uh, this time I was like, oh, okay. All right, this is different. This has a different sound. I hear the screams at the back, which uh, I didn't hear in the previous tracks before. And which is kind of nice. It's, it's like, it's a mix of the light and the heavy together. 
You get what I mean, right? I, yeah. just, I, can't, I can't explain the technical side because the only thing I know how to play is a CD player. There's a button. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I can't explain all the drums are like this, the guitars like that. I wouldn't know jack right. shit about it, man. But the thing is, I like the, how it made me feel. And I kind of like the sound because I could visualize a kick-ass music video for this one, man. <laughs> it has all the right elements in it to come out with the the perfect music video that everybody's been waiting for. Not not the lyrical ones, eh? I'm not talking about the lyrical yeah. ones, a proper one. Is there any plans for that? There is. The only reason why we haven't shot it is because of the freaking restrictions. Oh, you know? man. Yeah, because I've been telling the guys, like, you know, and I've been, like, you know, trying to ask people, you know, if there are roadblocks anywhere, you know, is there a way we can kind of, like, you know, fi- just avoid and try to get out of wherever we are uh but it's just so tough you know we don't want to risk it we don't want to risk paying like a grand or five grand or whatever the amount is for nothing you know for just wanting to make a music video uh, you know a, which is something that we are passionate about so there is a plan but who knows when but i'm a bit confused because i'm seriously extremely confused with the sops that keep coming out it's like you can go more than 10 kilometers, but you can't go different districts. Is that it? You know, up yeah. to this point, I don't really know. But Ian, you, you will know <laughs> yeah, best. Yeah, same here. You will know like, best because you live, you live the furthest from all of us. It's like, because like, yeah. you go to Taman Tun, there's one district. Then you go to Banda Utama, there'll be another district. You know, yeah. it's like from here to Wuchong, it's just about, what, five kilometers away, but two different districts. So how the, does that shit work, man? <laughs> Until today, I still can't figure that out. <laughs> Is is that is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. So learned. like for me, I I stay in Kajang. Okay. So uh, the ten km radius uh, ends at uh, Chera Central. Okay. So so once they lift the ten km radius band, I still can't cross over to Chera's like Taman Sega or Taman Connaught because it's inter district. So it's basically the same <laughs> gate, which is oh, I just stay man. home la. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. So it's I like ten km. Is- within like let's say for example if you're in pj you can t- travel past 10 km in pj <laughs> yeah exactly oh uh, yeah he didn't pj yeah <laughs> yeah i actually I thought it's was... not no i actually thought that is no longer applicable i thought you can actually travel around already right yeah that's what i was right? a bit confused yeah, i don't know I... lah you know like our brother yeah. never announced nicely so you know people <laughs> you are still can confused, go la. but you cannot go but if you want to go you can go <laughs> But yeah. we won't let you go. We'll let you go, yeah. but we don't want you to go. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That makes uh, sense. Hopefully, makes sense. Yeah, that's how it works. Like. That's the whole thing, how it works. But I'm seriously looking forward for that music video to come out. And uh, I'm guessing I'm guessing by next month, or, or rather this month, September, uh, they might be opening up. That's what I heard rumors. I don't know. So far, so good. Yeah. Uh, the cases, I mean, we, we have vaccinated, what, more than 50%? Mm. So it's yeah. just a matter of time. Yeah, man. yeah that's true. But, I mean... I just hope that, you know, like a proper announcement can be made because like after after a while, I just stopped following the news, you know, and I'm yeah. like, man, you know, I'm just, I'm just so tired. You know, I just really want to get this music video done because also it's also part of the Chendana grant, you know. Um, I've already highlighted to the people at Chendana saying that I can get the track out. I can get the behind the scenes video out because all these things were done prior. But to create something new right now, which is the music video, I can't do it because of the restrictions. So this grant is supposed to be only an eight week long thing. But obviously oh. now it's just going to be extended a little bit longer. La. So I, yeah. I, mean, I hope they understand that because it, it they is do, tough. They you're do. Not, yeah. Yeah. You're not the first one because I had friends who were actually applied for it and they had issues because it was way overdue. And uh, you can't do anything much. Nobody can go anywhere, can't shoot anything, can't record anything. So that's, that's yeah. a bummer. So what's next? Uh, but speaking of music and the sounds, uh, right after All Over Again, is this how the sound is going to be from now on? Or is this just going to be like an experiment for this season? Uh, to be honest... I think that's yeah, similar, I mean, right? Go ahead. Yeah, it, it, it kind of sounds similar because like... I remember because uh, um, Darren was also writing some new stuff, and then I think it's kind of around the same vibe. Um, in that sound. I mean, if you want to yeah. make a comparison between like uh, the sound that we have now with um, previous albums, for example, then I w- I would say that it does sound different. So then the sound now, yeah, it was it's kind of going to be somewhat similar, but there's going to be different 
types as well. I think it's more of like showcasing um, elements of who we are and you know what we what really inspires us the most. Yeah, cool man. Because about you, you guys something are... like that, yeah. And, yeah. Um, what what uh, to to me, yeah, like what he said as well. Um, but one thing that really surprised me is that um, the he. You know, the all, all Over Again is basically like the first track of our new uh, thing this year, right? So then uh, Darren sent me the second track. I was like, oh, okay, all right. It sounds somewhat similar. Uh, we can work on that. But when we worked on, on it already and when the end result came out, I was like, I was kind of surprised by the result. I was like, oh my God, this is really interesting. Then when he sent me the third track, which was just like last week, I was like, mm. okay, that's another new thing, you know. They all sound the same, but the thing is, there there are like a lot of different elements in it that it makes okay. that that it sort of surprise uh surprises me because like I would never feel that Asian would go to that direction, which okay. I which I think people who actually know us right they would be surprised as well in a good way. Yeah, because you guys, like I said, you're unpredictable. Like for example, when you came out with "I Don't Give a Damn." I thought it was just going to be one rock track and then they came up with several remixes to it which made it even more interesting on that track and now you have this so it's like it's very unpredictable when it comes to an honest mistake you never know what to expect from you guys which is a good yeah. thing so i don't have you won't be too predictable yeah is there going to be remixes for this one um yeah so like for i don't give a damn that was kind of like the strategy to buy time for these new songs that's why okay. we did all the remixes so it start it it started with just one. It was supposed to be that that one track. Uh, it was a dubstep one, and then after that, like sh like crazy started like, and he asked me, "Hey, can I have your stamps?" You know, so it kind of like snowballed, and every every other DJ later on, they they're like, "Hey, come on, send me la, I do a remix." You know, so that kind <laughs> of like like snowball, right? So now it, it makes me think like, should we do one for this as well or not? You know, I, I don't know. We, we possibly could because like, like crazy, he's already asked for the stamp. So I'm like, okay, by uh -huh. all means, go ahead. You know, <laughs> so it probably could, la, you know, again, you know, it's just a, another strategy to just buy time and just kind of like, you know, stay relevant and to still make that noise. You know what I mean? Okay. Okay. Which is cool. Which is cool. I'm, I yeah. wish you best of luck in this, man. I seriously, once again, I have to say thank you to uh, all of you guys for coming on board the show. It's nice to see the whole family for a change coming on board, which is great. Darren, it's always a pleasure. Like I said, you're no longer a guest on this show. You're family, man. You know, people are <laughs> just, like wondering, it's like, okay, fine. Because we work a lot together. So it is, is, it is a great pleasure having you guys on board. And I wish you all the best for this track all over again, which is available on Spotify. Right? Exactly. Spotify and all the other streaming platforms. Uh, YouTube, <laughs> not yet. In YouTube, not yet. Coming soon, coming soon. YouTube music video, not yet, but it's available on YouTube music. Oh, yeah. okay. That's another thing I'm still getting confused of, that YouTube music thing. Do you <laughs> want to purchase one-month trial? Do you want to try one-month trial? <laughs> <Skip game>? trial. <laughs> I just trial. want to watch the damn video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you want to subscribe? <laughs> I got enough accounts. I don't know which is which anymore, man. It's like cool, man. So be before we wrap things up, is there anything you guys like to share with the uh, audience out there? Ian, you want to say something? Um, just a PSA to, you know, to continue to support local music. Uh, definitely in Malaysia, we have a lot of local talent, you know, and then um, it's more of just for everyone to explore you know, and to support. And that's how the community can strive, you know, I can go on. So when things get better, uh, it's always good to see new acts coming up on stage, uh, writing new songs, you know, and it sort of inspires us as well. Being old timers, I would say, in the industry, <laughs> and and for us to also help and guide them, um, because definitely um, this gives us an opportunity to support the the new generation of musicians, you know, to provide a platform for them. So yeah, just continue supporting your local music, and also when the time comes, go watch them play live shows. Yeah, nice, nice. Cool. The rest of you guys, you guys have anything else to say? Uh, Thomas, on behalf of Thomas, uh, he is single, he's available, and uh, he's at home right now. So please do uh, hit him up on Tinder. If you find it, swipe right. And uh, No, nope, I'm not right on right. any of those platforms. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm actually really shy right now. Really? Like, like, legit, bro. I, I can tell you that I've been single for two years now that I don't even know how to talk to girls anymore. I mean, it's not oh, that I'm man. turning homo or anything, but, but no, I, I really can't 
Uh, ladies, help a brother out. <laughs> ladies, help a brother out, man. He, don't, okay, don't. Here, here's the thing, okay? Here's the thing, okay? So the guys from Love Me Butch told me this many, many years ago, okay? So they said, guitarists have fast fingers. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, um, bassists, because, yeah, bassists, because you need to hold down the fort, you know what I mean? So, bassists, you have a, a big, a big brother, you know, <laughs> that's okay. what they say. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, Thomas, <laughs> Tom, <laughs> Thomas can play the guitar and the bass, okay? So, wow, fingers chanted, uh. bawa <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a porno. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, at least you get some sponsored by XM Stereo or Pornhub. I'll be happy, man. But <laughs> <wait>. <laughs> do check it out. Please do check out these the guys. I've put up all the links. I'll be putting up all the links on the website as their social media pages. Follow them on Instagram. Uh, follow them uh, on Spotify. And the most importantly, when you follow them, please do share it. Don't just follow and like. You have to share it, spread the word around, and have it have an experience with their brand new track called "All Over Again." Um, there's a brand new one, pretty catchy, and uh, you definitely got to have. Uh, sorry, you got to have. Sorry, you got to listen to it using a headphone. That's the best way you can experience that track, man. Headphones are the best exactly. way to enjoy good music, man. You don't just crack it up on your phone and listen to it on your phone. No, no, it doesn't work that way. And uh, share it as much as possible. Once again, guys. Thank you so much for coming in, Bot. It's been a pleasure. It's always great to have you guys on the show. And uh, thank you for being a, a great inspiration to the rest of the bands out there by producing more music on a regular basis, being consistent with that, which I admire in a band. That's one of the best things about musicians and bands, coming out with music constantly and consistently. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, yeah? man. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks for having us.